Let's try question number five. This question has a maximum mark up to seven points. And it says that we need to consider the functions f of x equals cosine x and g of x is equal to sine 2x, where the x value is between 0 and the pi. The graph of the f intersects the graph of the g at the point A and the point B and also the point C as shown on the following diagram. So that is the question and this is our diagram here. And then we know that point B is actually a pi over 2 comma 0, right? And then g of x uh, is actually equals to sine 2x and f, function f, is actually equals to cosine x. So let's write this out first. Okay, so let's do question A. So we need to find the x coordinate of the point A and the x coordinate of point C. And we do know that these coordinate points, these coordinate points are actually the intersection points of the graph of F and the graph of the G. So using this information, we can say uh, question A, the f of x is equal to g of x, okay? And since uh, f of x is equal to cosine x and g of x is equal to sine 2x, we can say cosine x is equal to sine 2x. So what you're going to do is we're going to use a double angle formula from your formula booklet, uh, which is that sine 2x is equal to 2 times sine x times cosine x. This formula is located in your formula booklet, page 5, section 3.6, under the double angle identities. Okay, Then using this formula, we can say, Cosine x is same as 2 times sine x times cosine x. Then we can cancel off the cosine x, right? By dividing each side or by moving the cosine x to the other side, right? Then we can say 2 sine x is equal to 1. Then sine x is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, and when we reach this point, uh, since we need to find this x value, what you're going to do is we're going to use the unicircle okay uh, we're going to figure out at what degree uh, the sine x values have uh, the 1 over 2 okay because we know that from the graph, the x-axis are actually between 0 and pi, or in other words, x-axis means the angle, the degree, right? So this is your unicircle, okay? You're supposed to memorize the, you know, how to solve these angles at this point, right? So just as a reference, I'm just using the unicircle here. So we have between the 0 degree and then pi degree, there are two cases where our sine x value is actually equals to 1 over 2. That is the points are the pi over 6 when angle is pi over 6 we have a uh, sine x equals to 1 over 2 and also when the angle is uh, 5 pi over 6 we have a sine x value again equals to 1 over 2 right so there are two cases so using this information so we can say that the x coordinate values are equals to pi over 6 and uh, 5 pi over 6. Okay, then let's try the question B. So question B, we need to find the area of the R. Okay, so let's try this question on this new page. So question B, we need to find the area of the R. So we are looking for this shaded region, right? So in order to solve this question, I'm going to use the integration where I'm subtracting the function g of x from the function f of x. 
Okay, and also we also do know that from the, your formula booklet, page eight, uh, on the section five point ten, uh, we do know the like, the outcomes of the standard integrals, right? So using this information, we do know that when you integrate the sine x, uh, we get negative cosine x plus c, and when you integrate the cosine x. Uh, we get sine x plus c. Okay, so using this information, uh, since we are trying to find just this shaded area, okay, uh, what you're going to do is we are integrate from the five pi over two to the five pi over six, and then we are going to subtract sine two x from the cosine x. Okay, then we get, uh, we can also rewrite this as a 5 pi over 6 pi over 2 cosine x minus 5 pi over 6 pi over 2 here, and then sine 2x. Okay, then this is also equals to uh, sine x 5 pi over 6 pi over 6 minus negative cosine 2x over 2 is same as pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and then pi over 2, right? Then we can also say that uh, this is same as sine x plus cosine 2x over 2, 5 pi over 6, pi over 2. Okay, then when you expand this, we get sine 5 pi over 6 plus 1 over 2 times cosine 2 times 5 pi over 6 minus sine pi over 2 plus 1 over 2 cosine 2 times pi over 2. Okay, then simplifying all this, we get us the value sine 5 pi over 6 plus 1 over 2 times cosine 5 pi over 3 minus sine pi over 2 plus 1 over 2 times cosine pi. Okay, then using the unit circle, we do know that uh, sine 5 pi over 6 is same as 1 over 2 and then cosine 5 pi over 3 is also equal to 1 over 2 minus sine pi over 2 is same as 1 and cosine pi is same as negative 1 then we get 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 uh, minus 1 plus 1 over 2, right? Then the final answer is 1 over 4. So we can say that the area of R is equal to 1 over 4. So in order to solve these questions, we must uh, know the unit circle and then also know how to find the area between two graphs. Okay, then let's do question number 6. This question has maximum mark of the 5 points. So let's go over the question together. So it says that we have to consider a geometric sequence. This question is very nice. It is telling us that this is a geometric sequence question with the first term 1 and a color ratio 10. And Sn is the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. So question A, we need to find the expression for Sn in the form a to the power of n minus 1 over b where a and b are positive integers, okay? So question A, just by the way, you know, z plus means positive integers, right? So from the question, we know that our first term, u1 is equal to 1, and the common ratio r is equal to 10. And we have to find the expression for Sn in the form 
a to the power of n minus 1 over b. That means we have to use the series formula for the geometric sequence. So we're going to use something like Sn equals to u1 times r to the power of n minus 1 over r minus 1. You can find this formula from your formula booklet. It is on page 2 under section 1.3. Okay? And you can see the series formula here. Then using this formula, you can substitute all the values that we know. So u1 is 1, and the r value is 10. So 10 to the power of n minus 1 over 10 minus 1. Then we have uh, 10 to the power of n minus 1 over 9. Okay. So you know a value is equal to 10, b value is equal to 9, right, by the way. Then question B, so hence we need to show that this addition of all the terms in this sequence is equals to this value here. Okay, so that means question B, we need to find the sum of the all the terms, right? So from the inverse term to the end, and then we knew that the series formula from the or the, the formula for the sum from the question A is same as uh, 10 to the power of n, but you know, we're just going to replace the n with the i because we are using i here. So 10 to the power of i minus 1 over 9. Okay. Then using this formula, we can take the 1 over 9 out and then we can rewrite this as i equals 1 and, and also 10 to the power of i minus 1. Then uh, okay, then we can expand this formula using the sigma method, right? So this is same as i equals 1 and 10i minus i equals 1 and 1, okay? Okay, then we know that this part here is same as uh, 10 times 10 to the power of n minus 1 over 9. And this part here is equal to 1, right? Then we can rewrite this as uh, 1 over 9 times 10 times 10 to the power of n minus 1 over 9 minus n. Okay, then we can say 1 over 9. Uh, 10 times 10 to the power of n minus 1 minus 9n over 9. Then we can say that finally uh, the final answer is 10 times 10 to the power of n minus 1 minus 9n over 81. So uh, we have shown that the sum of the other terms in this sequence is equal to 10 times 10 to the power of n minus 1 minus 9n over 81. So QED.